Hey guys, how's it going? Happy Wednesday. It is late in the afternoon, early evening, and I'm shooting this video because we tried to go on Periscope. I actually went on Periscope and we were doing a scope, but I think like five times in a row, my scope kept freezing and everybody, we had to keep rebooting. And finally I got to like the fifth time and I'm like, I'm going to flood the stream with so many scopes from Kelly Alexa. The people are going to look at it and go, who is this loser that is scoping every five minutes? So I think we all determined that um, Periscope was having some broadcasting issues today because it just kept freezing and I've done three or four scopes before and it wasn't doing that. So um, I had started doing a Periscope today, very impromptu, to address a lot of um, common either questions or concerns that I see with our Fitfluential ambassadors. So folks that are bloggers, YouTubers, fitness influencers that work um, within the fit financial community I also do things on their own um, but I also see this just in general a lot uh, with maybe what I'd call wannabe entrepreneurs and I don't mean that in a negative way I just mean people that are looking into starting their own business and and feeling insecure about it and whatnot I see a lot of the types of um, questions pop up and there's two things that I've realized I've become very passionate about and I'm stopping here before I continue to let all of you know that my videos going forward and, and really everything I'm doing online is going to have one of two themes. It's either A, me sharing obviously my fitness journey and the lessons that I'm learning so that I can pass that on to you guys and you can learn from me and learn with me. Um, obviously it's something I'm very passionate about and you know, heck, if I can help you guys uh, learn the lessons I'm learning faster than I did, that's awesome. But the other thing I've become very passionate about, um, I didn't plan on this, but as I grew Fitfluential and founded this company and it, and it grew into an organization that's become so successful and is, is thriving and growing and we, we kind of are just beginning, I, I have become very inspired by so many of our Fitfluential ambassadors that are doing such outstanding things in starting their own businesses or, you know, again, going into book publishing or, or a multi-level marketing organization and, and whatever, but they're really taking initiative and doing a great job. They do a great job on our campaigns with our clients and, and they're just doing awesome, I mean, awe-inspiring things. And I also see a lot of folks that want to do that. And so, therefore, because I've done my own company thing, founded my own company, I've seen those of my people that are doing it, I want to help other people that aren't there yet or that have the desire to do it, figure certain things out and understand that they can do it and certainly um, pave the way, point them in the right direction to certain resources or other individuals that might coach them or inspire them or lead them and so on. Um, but those are going to tend to be the two things that I speak about and, and provide content around because those are the two primary things about which I'm very passionate. So we started the scope like I mentioned, and I don't know if I mentioned this um, earlier in this video, but I was sharing my top 10 tips for um, what not to do if you want to be successful in business. And I mentioned this on the scope. You can watch the replay on Periscope. I'm Kelly Alexa on Periscope. Hope you follow me over there. K-E-L-L-Y-O-L-E-X-A. I almost said it Periscope. K-E-L-L-Y-O-L-E-X-A on Periscope. Um, so I did go through these on Periscope and I did uh, reiterate as I was saying, these tips to me can refer to somebody if you're working for someone else, if you're in a business organization, as I used to be before I founded this company, or if you are working uh, as a blogger or a YouTuber and you, you want to monetize that business, you want to do something, or maybe you've already started and you're just ready to take things up a notch, or you do both. Maybe you have a full-time job and you're blogging or YouTubing or um, just starting down that road and, and you want to do more so that maybe you can break away from that traditional job. So when I say business, it really it, it covers all of those. But my top 10 tips were this. Here's what not to do if you want to be successful in business. Number one, be timid and insecure about yourself and your products if you have products. Number two, move slow. Number three, worry about pleasing everyone. Huge, huge lesson I've learned. Number four, Worry about what people think about you and or your products. Number five, think that you cannot sell. This is a huge one. I'll get back to that in a second. I'll elaborate on a few of these points. Number six, try to copy somebody else. Number seven, 
think that everything has to be perfect before you start or go live or tell people about your business. Um, number eight, kind of similar, overthink things uh, because that will come up a lot, you know, the ability to overthink, overanalyze. Um, number nine, worry about what you should or what you shouldn't do. I hear people saying this all the time. Um, and number 10, do the bare minimum. Um, so let me elaborate on a few of those things. Then I have three questions from some of our Fitfluential ambassadors that I want to answer, and then I'm going to cut it, and we'll do more of these Q&As. Certainly, if you guys have specific questions, leave them in the comments below. I'm going to have this video on my blog, kellyolexa.com. I hope you'll head over there and subscribe, where I'll have more stuff uh, to add on to this as well. And I have, you know, again, a lot more posts, a lot more resources stuff both about fitness and about business and um, I'm just expanding this stuff every day. Um, so again, just to pick up on a few of these things, what not to do that I feel very strongly about. Number three and number four, if you worry about pleasing everybody and what people think of you, you might as well just stop now because that's what I, I'm telling you. Most of these things I used to do, um, I used to worry about even the content I was putting up. If my videos, I mean, I used to have people tell me how to dress, where to put the camera, how much makeup to wear. And you know, all of you, if you've been with me for a while, you've seen, I've gotten some horrifying comments some very insulting comments. Um, people that will say harassing things, people that just don't like you. I've had um, crit criticism of me personally, criticism of my business. Um, people that think they can do my business better than me, think that they came up with the idea. I mean, I have heard it all and in the beginning, I'd always try to fix those things. If somebody came to me and said something, I'd try to be, you know, how can I convince them to not feel that way? How can I convince that person to not, you know, be so annoyed that I'm happy and energetic and positive all the time? How can I make them like me? Guess what? Number one, you can't make anybody like you. Number two, going down that path, you're not getting paid for that. So why do you want to waste your time chasing down somebody whose opinion or constructive criticism is really not all that constructive? The best thing you can do is to become stronger in yourself and realize that pleasing others doesn't pay the bills, okay? Worrying about keeping everybody happy, worrying about making everybody like you is not going to make you successful. In fact, it will actually keep you so preoccupied and depressed and full of anxiety, you'll never get anywhere. Trust me on this one. And I will make sure I do other videos on that topic alone because it's a game changer in your life when you stop worrying about all that stuff. Number five, think about, um, think that you cannot sell. Now I did give this example and a lot of people were like high-fiving it and going, that's a really great way to think of it. And I do, I think this is a great way to think of it. When people say, well, I, I'd love to do this, but I'm, I'm not a salesperson, I can't sell. Or, um, you know, I, I want to promote my business, but I'm just not outgoing like you are, Kelly. Or they might say this to somebody else. Um, I just joined, you know, multi-level marketing company A, B, or C. And it's good, but I'm, I'm just not a salesperson. I don't want to come across as salesy. I don't want people to think I'm selling. I don't want to sound pushy. I hear this all the time. And I don't know when selling got to be such a dirty word because look around you in your house. Is there anything in your house that you didn't buy? Ultimately, somebody did some selling in there and you did some buying in there. And do you feel really angry about it? Do you feel angry? Like, am I looking at all the things I've bought? I bought that water bottle. I bought those two phones. I bought this computer. I bought all the furniture in here. I bought my house. I bought my car. Am I angry that somebody sold me that? No. And then furthermore, think about this example, okay? Think about the last great movie that you saw. Like for me, I, I can think of many, but I loved Godzilla. I was obsessed with Godzilla. I still am. I bought it on my Comcast. I bought the hard copy of it. I've watched it like a gazillion times. When I was in Miami on vacation uh, oh, a long time ago, I went to see it by myself and then I went to see it by myself again. And then I think I went to see it by myself up here. And anybody, just like I'm telling you right now, I told them, I'm absolutely obsessed with that movie. The special effects were awesome. Oh my God, it's so cool. You've got to go see it. I got my brother-in-law to go with me. I got my little niece to go with me. And I spoke just like I was speaking to you guys about it. I love it. How many times have you told somebody like that about a movie that you love or about a meal that you had? Like, oh my God, have you been to Outback Steakhouse? Can you believe those cheese fries? They're so amazing. Guess what? I have news for you. You just sold somebody, but you just didn't get paid for it. So at what kind of time warp, weird 
passage in the universe did things get so twisted where we're okay telling somebody something's really cool or awesome, but if you said, okay, how about Kelly Alexa every time you told somebody about Godzilla and they went and they saw that movie, that you were going to get five bucks for that, that I would go, oh my gosh, no, that would be awful. No, no, and don't tell them that. Why do we think that's a bad thing? If you want to look at things differently, pick the things that you're excited in life about. Clearly, I'm excited in life about my company, Fitfluential. We do extraordinary things, and I get very excited about fitness, health, and wellness. So you know what? I don't have a problem telling you that if I use something, it's awesome. And here's why I love it. And if you don't like it, guess what? Move on. And if you think I look stupid, and you think I'm too energetic or whatever, and you think it's dumb that maybe part of what my business does is people get paid for doing that and doing that well, usually, here's the thing, people, the folks that are going to be pointing the fingers and going, well, you know, she's telling you about that protein powder, but she's getting paid for it. Um, usually those people are bitter, angry, and just overall negative in life. Okay, why are you going to worry about making them like you and approve of what you're doing? Because generally, they're usually jealous that they can't do that. And the reason they can't do that is because they're frowning so much all the time. There's not enough Botox in the world that can fix that. Let's just move on. Everybody can sell. Don't kid yourself that you can't. Pick the things that you're excited about, and then you're really not going to feel like you're selling. But get over trying to avoid selling because that's just ridiculous. You should never, ever, ever apologize for earning living by selling anything. That's just moronic. Um, thinking that everything has to be perfect first. I need to wrap up here. I'm, I'm pushing 12 minutes. That's more along the lines of, and I have been so guilty of this, you guys, especially Fitfluential ambassadors, bloggers, uh, personal trainers, anybody that's getting a website set up for a business online, they think, oh, I can't, I don't want to do any sales calls yet. I don't want to tell people about my business yet because I'm working on this one thing on my website. I'm working on this. I've still got, I talked to one guy, I'm not going to mention any names. I have been talking to him for two and a half years and he's still working on his website. That's two and a half years that somebody else came in and took his clients that he could have had. And somebody, I think it was maybe Michael Hyatt mentioned in a podcast, he was like, you know who does things as far as a sales cycle extraordinarily well is Apple. They put out a product and everybody complains that it has all these glitches. But guess what? They put out a product, everybody buys it, they tell you what's wrong with it, and then they fix it. And then they come out with an update that everybody's like, oh, this update is so awesome! And then they pay for, well, maybe they don't pay for the update in the system, but they just still are making money while they're doing the R&D and while they're making their product better. And they're making their product better with free input from their clients. Instead of going, we can't release this until we've tested absolutely every single thing on the planet. If every technology company did that, none of them would be in business. Think about that. Um, overthink things, worry about what you should or shouldn't do. Um, again, I just always hear people go, do you think I should put this on my blog? Do you think I, uh, this person wrote into me and they asked me this question, they're a client. Do you think I should say, do you think I should do, if you're asking yourself if you should do something, sh you should do it. Just understand that. So let me get to a few questions. Um, I'm at 13 minutes. Um, questions, a lot of you guys, actually, I'm going to make that a separate video. So a couple of you ambassadors had asked me specific questions. That's a whole other video, how to start working with brands and reaching out to brands, and, and I, I, that could even be a series. So we'll table that. Um, but you said, um, a lot of you had asked about, you want to make money online or have your own business, but you have a full-time job and you're staying there for job security. Um, the only thing I'm going to tell you is, um, this is what I used to say, and this is why I ended up quitting my job at the agency to build this business full-time. There's no such thing as job security. You are absolutely fooling yourself if you think that working for a Fortune 500 brand or any company really is job security, okay? Um, my neighbor just lost her job. She'd worked for a company for 11 years in accounting. Um, I just actually tweeted out an article that I think Kraft and Heinz are decreasing 7,000? At least it was, it, it, maybe it was 700, it was either 700 plants they were shutting down or 7,000 jobs. It was something extraordinary. Um, a lot of the CPG organizations out there are cutting a lot of jobs because they have massive decrease in sales because consumers are becoming more aware of label reading and they're buying less packaged goods. I'm going to have to get my doorbell. Hold on! And 
but again, job security, not really a, a cool thing. Here's the thing, because I have to answer my door, I'm gonna wrap this up, but the two other questions that I have, I'll do in my next video and we'll continue. Go to my blog, kellyalexa.com, read the rest of this, let me know your questions, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.